Hey everybody, this is Mario from Sparrow Robotics. Today I'm gonna to tell you about the five main steps to getting a club started at your college, or university, or even a high school. I know I said that this video was going to be part two for the dustpan, and that's nearly done, but we're going to be putting it on pause currently because we're using the printer to print COVID-19 masks and donating them to hospitals. Okay. Step one is getting members and finding a common interest. In regards to getting members and finding a common interest, what I did was walk up to a lot of students that I've met in the beginning of the school year, and I just asked them basic questions like, hey, you ever heard of the TV show BattleBots? Do you like robotics? What do you know about robotics? And stuff like that. Many of them answered, eh, I think it's pretty cool and interesting, but I've never really done anything like it. And I'm like, well, I'd be glad to show you. And I showed them the paper that I needed signed to get members. And I got a tally of different members signing up there and giving me their email so that when the club did get started, I'd be able to reach out to them and get them going for the first meetings because I thought that it'd be a good thing to build up a big following of members that wanna do it so that when it's started, we already have members instead of starting it and then looking for members after that. Finding the common interest, I talked to a lot of engineering students and a lot of students in my classes and asked them if they were interested in it or what type of robotics are you interested in? What would you like to pursue? and the club can go off a route like that. We ended up making a PowerPoint and having a general meeting about all different types of robotics, and I broke each one down, the do's and don'ts, the how-to's, and we had students vote on what type of robotics they would like to do, what type of robotics they would like to see at the school, and we went from there. Step two is finding a location to work out of and obtaining necessary resources to run the club on bots. Next, we had a space that we were able to get. It was an empty space in the bottom of one of the residence halls, and it belonged to the engineering department. So they said that we could run our club out of it. Within this, we were able to see all the sizes that we had and find tools that we wanted to fit in here. There was a storage unit for us to put all of our stuff so we can measure everything out and see how we were gonna lay everything out. So we made a whole custom list of tools, where to get them, how much we need, why we need it, why it's the best one. And we sent that to the engineering department and they were going to look over that and see if they could help provide us with that. And then we wanted to start getting building. FingerTech Robotics and Jab Hobbies gave us a lot of starter kits for a very good discount. So we have teaching sessions for our students to get building on these kits that they will soon compete with. We went to um, Home Depot and got parts for some test boxes that the students would be able to test their robots in safely because the robots that we're building will have weapons and spinners on there and we wouldn't want any students spinning that up in an open area. And the other type of robotics that we wanted to incorporate into our club was the NASA mining competition. We knew that the combat robotics would be fun, but we also wanted to work on something bigger scale and not as dangerous and it would also incorporate a lot of programming, a lot of intricate designing, and it would allow us to compete with a wide range of schools in a very competitive competition. So we looked into that and we found all the specific standards for it and the different awards that you can win. And we looked more into that, but that is something that we're gonna save a little bit till later on when we have the machinery to make all of our parts from scratch instead of having to outsource everything, which will be significantly more expensive and it will hurt our budget a lot more than we believe combat robotics will to start. Step three is all about the money, funding and sponsorships. So one of the first things that we wanted to do was obtain some sponsors because we know that materials and parts would get expensive and we were not able to reach out to sponsors for monetary donations due to some other complications with the school trying to reach out to get fundraising for engineering labs and other programs. So we realized to get these parts that we wanted, we should reach out to the companies that own the parts and ask for sponsorships for products instead of monetary donations. We ended up um, connecting with some really great companies. 
For robot parts and starter kits, we reached out to FingerTech Robotics, Jab Hobbies, and we were able to get some parts from them. For other parts for machining, we got in contact with AI Machine Shop, Made in China, and Send Cut Send. And for some other bigger robot parts, we talked to Maytech Electronics, Andy Mark, and Max Amps. We also got in contact with All Row Steel and Plastics for the Lexan and metal that we needed for our Reno. These companies ended up being so gracious that they gave us parts that we needed at very high discounts, or they even gave it to us for free. We talked back and forth of the benefits that we can provide them um, when they help us furthering our education. This ended up being really beneficial to us because we had to pay for everything out of our own club's pocket. We had to go to our student governing association and pitch a budget. We had to break down to the penny how much money we would be spending on each product, why we needed the product, and why we needed that many of the product. Step four is fundraising and hosting slash planning events. For fundraising, what we ended up doing was designing and creating our own custom ID holders. And what we started off with was I thought, what is a product that people use on a day-to-day -day basis that needs to be improved? And I looked down at my ID and I saw my ID holder and there were a few different issues that I had with it. First, the hook on the back that you hook your lanyard to always breaks. Second, you couldn't scan into events easily because it was a foggy plastic that you couldn't scan through. And third, when you wanted to go get a meal, you had to take your ID out of the ID holder. So I got to the drawing board and I designed these. And it says uh, North Central College down here, two colors. You could scan in two events from the back being clear and they easily come out and the hook is very strong. Also, there's this one that you can just give it to them at the dining halls and they swipe it. And these we ended up making for 20 to 30 cents each and selling them for $5. And within a couple of days, we sold over 60 of them. So that helped us get a lot of funding just to begin with and to get our initial orders off the ground and start putting money towards building the arena that we would soon compete on. With the arena that we are hoping to build, we are hoping to have events and we think it might be hard for us to go to other schools and missing schools and driving out of the state. So holding our own events maybe two to three times a year would be beneficial for us. One, it would get us a lot of experience. Two, it would bring in some money for people paying for events and concessions and help us fundraise for the club. And three, it would give our members a lot of experience with testing out the robots that they built, seeing what needs to be changed and going from there. We are planning to have it open to everybody in the country. And we would even have some of the people from the BattleBots TV show come maybe bring their bigger bots. Maybe we can make it a bigger event and part of our engineering open house just so that we can get a lot of people there and get the word out about our school, about our club, and get our students working. Step five is getting moving and growing interests and obtaining bigger connections within the school. When it comes to getting moving and growing your interest within the school, I started by obtaining a lot of the kits that we sent from our previous sponsors. And we got the lab and we set up the lab with all of these kits and we did a lot of PowerPoints for the students saying, this is what this type of robot is. This is how you build it. Here's some videos of robots like it competing. And then we went from there to talk about what type of robot would you like to build? How would you like to go about building it? And then we talked about actually competing with it and going about that. I went and built test boxes so that once the robots were built, they would be able to be tested and ran. We will be posting more videos on our YouTube channel of our members building the robots, getting into robotics, testing the robots for the first time, and building all the way up to our first competition just to show all the steps that go into it, but also showing that it's not too difficult to get started. We also 
had to talk to many different members of the school, higher ups about financials and running events and how we'd like this club to branch out to be a huge part of the college. We wanted this club to be something that students will come to our school because they know we have a strong engineering program and they know we have a strong robotics program and that can branch out to any club that you want to do. You have to make sure that it's something students want to partake in and it's something that students are eager to come to the school to be a part of that club and let that be a part of their college experience. So here are my five steps to creating and getting your club started. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, comment below. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe.